I'd like to call the City Planning Commission to order. Would the clerk or the secretary please call the roll? Mayor Vandersteen? Here. Alderman Bourne? Here. Don Sfiton? Absent. Dave Huffman? Here. Jerry Jones? Here. Marilyn Montemayor? Here. Ryan Sazma? Here. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> well, today, because of the coronavirus, we're having members join us remotely. In order to stay at the 10-person rule, we've also have those attending related to agenda items in a separate room, and they'll be brought into this room as their item is up for discussion. So next item is uh, introduction of committee members and staff. I think we, uh, we've got the introductions from the committee members, if the staff would like to introduce themselves. I'm Chad Palaszczuk, the Director of Planning and Development. Steve Sokolowski from the Planning Department. Very, that's good. Uh, Ryan Sazma from Department of Public Works. Very good. Uh, next is to identify a potential conflict of interest. Does anyone have a problem with any of the items that are on our agenda today? Seeing none. Uh, next item is the minutes from our uh, meeting on March 10th. I'd accept a motion to approve those minutes. Make a motion to approve. Alderman Boren, motion. Second. Thank you very much for that motion and support. When you're um, going to make a motion, just say your last name and then what you'd like to do. Uh, that'd be great as we go ahead. So all those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes, please signify by saying aye. We have to do a roll call. Aye. 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 The rest of them won't go home. Now, as we go on for the other items for discussion and possible action, uh, Chad will be calling the roll for each one of those for your votes on it. So item 3.1 is a conditional use and variance application by Signs Unlimited to install a new monument sign at Take 5 Oil Change located at 1328 Indiana Avenue. I'll turn it over to Steve for a report. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I believe Tara Teske from Signs Unlimited is on the phone. Is that correct, Tara? Thank you. Um, what we're taking a look at is Signs Unlimited is proposing a new Take 5 oil change <clears throat> sign located at 1328 Indiana Avenue. This is the north west, or northeast corner of 14th and in Indiana. Um, recently, there was a change of ownership, and so uh, Take 5 is now rebranding the oil change uh, uh, locations that they have. The applicant had submitted a sign permit for the monument sign that you see before you today. One of the things that we found out is that the sign was not quite meeting the 12 foot setback to all the property lines. So what the applicant is proposing today is to be 12 feet from 14th Street and to be three feet from uh, the north property line. The north property line was a former Sitco gas station that has recently been raised. So, so we're taking the, the sign itself. Uh, uh, I can't. Can I see the sign ones? I can't remember what the square footage is. Uh, a little bit. So the sign itself is about. Um, 108 square feet, but when you take just the sign portion, I believe it was about 54 square feet. So what we're taking a look as is at just the three foot, there's a variance request for the three foot uh, setback to the north property line, and staff was recommending approval of the sign as proposed. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, the did the applicant have anything to add to that? The applicant is on the phone. 
No, Tara? I think she's pretty much covered it all. It was just that the, the fact of that there's not enough area there and it's well soft where that retaining wall is where the measurements from the property lines, obviously property lines aren't marked up on the site itself. It's via the GIS mappings that we use. So they put it where the proof was, and then, of course, the proof didn't hold straight, I guess, straight on exactly proportionate to where it should have been. So that's why it was placed in the incorrect spot. But in order to get it placed properly there, there's not a whole lot of area to work with at that property location. Thank you for those comments. I uh, entertain a motion to approve this project. I'll make a motion to approve. Mr. Alderman, I, make a motion to, I would make a motion to approve subject to conditions. I'll second. Monty Mayor, second. second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Thank you very much. Is there any uh, discussion? If you'd like to speak, just again, say your, your last name first and then uh, proceed with your comments. Hearing no discussion then, I'll ask uh, our, our secretary, Chad Palachek, to call the roll for approval. Mayor Vandersteen? Aye. Alderman Boren? Aye. Uh, Dave Huffman? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. Ryan Sazma? Aye. Motion carries. Motion passes. Next we'll move on to item 3.2. Uh, this is a conditional use and variance application by A. Chapa Construction to construct a new addition and site improvements at the Rewind Bar located at 1002 Michigan Avenue. Steve. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Tara Teske, if uh, you heard the, the plan commission had approved your previous sign, so if you want to hang up, you're good to go. Um, what we're taking a look is the Rewind Bar at 1002 uh, Michigan Avenue. And Tyler Chapa is here from Chapa Construction, representing the owner of Rewind Bar. Um, what we're taking a look at is an addition to the uh, first floor of the building on the west side of the site. Um, the addition itself is about 480 square feet. <coughs> And the reason for the addition is that presently that area is a gate and fenced in area to the outdoor patio and beer garden. Um, Rewind has been working with the police department in terms of always having a person who needs to man that particular gate. So instead of uh, having that fence, the owner had decided to propose a new yeah, if you could go to that next picture. So you can kind of see the uh, uh, picture of the um, uh, building and the outdoor patio. And so the uh, applicant's proposing to infill that with a first floor addition. It'd be about 400 square feet. And that would allow for a new uh, private entrance that would go both into the tavern and a new entrance into that outdoor patio area. Um, the architecture review board reviewed this matter last night, and you could see some of the design elements to that. Uh, they're basically matching the design concept of the existing builder building with uh, new and longer lasting materials. They will also be replacing um, some of the green siding on the east side of the building along 10th Street with uh, a newer siding material that will uh, be a more appropriate and compatible color with that of the rest of the building. Um, they're also building a little bit more of a parapet. There's a, a large um, HVAC unit on, on the roof, and the new parapet will help screen that. And constructing the new addition, replacing the existing damaged building materials, and creating one cohesive color scheme will substantially improve the overall look and feel of the property along Michigan Avenue and 10th Street. So staff was recommending approval of the conditional use permit subject to the conditions you have before you. Thank you for that report, Steve. Did the applicant want to add anything to that? No, I think Steve did a great job. <laughs> okay, that makes it simple. I'd uh, entertain a motion to approve uh, this conditional use. Monty Mayor, move to approve. Huffman, second. 
Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, this is Alderman Boren. Uh, I was just wondering when I read over the material on the uh, on the new addition, I noticed there's a second floor, and they said that was closed. Is the second floor just an extension of the downstairs bar, or is that an apartment, or what? What is that up there? So at one point, um, when the whole property changed hands to the current owner, um, that property or the second floor was open. And um, in order to get his bar up and running, he did uh, deem um, that to be closed off to the public. That way he could uh, have his bar open. Um, so right now that's totally shut down. There could be plans in the future to move forward and make that into a library of some sort or a coffee bar. Um, so that might come in the future, but for now, plans to keep that closed. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Uh, yes, this is Hoffman. Um, just in general, how often is the beer garden open? Um, it's open a couple times a week. Um, whenever the beer garden is open for access from the public, that is when they are required to have someone by that egress gate currently on the west side of the property line. Um, and it's quite popular in the spring, you know, Labor, Labor Day weekend, Memorial Day weekend, things of that sort. Thank you. Any other discussion? Thank you. Seeing no other discussion, would uh, Chad please call the roll? Mayor Vandersteen? Aye. Alderman Boren? Aye. Dave Huffman? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. Ryan Sazma? Aye. Motion carries. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to item 3.3, um, which is a conditional use and variance application by Rogers Behavioral Health to construct and operate six unit uh, community based residential facility, a CBRF, and an independent outpatient uh, meeting building from the vacant and undeveloped property located at 1108 South Wildwood Avenue, parcel 5928. 1215710, located south of Aldi's between Taylor Drive and South Wildwood Avenue. Steve. All right. Jack Collier is here from Rogers Behavioral Health and Steve Pesky from Design uh, Instinct. Instinctive Design. Instinctive Design. <laughs> Sorry about that, Steve. Um, so, what we're taking a look as the uh, vacant, about uh, three. 0.13 acres of property at 1108 Wildwood Avenue. As the mayor said, this is located directly to the south of Aldi's uh, grocery store between um, Taylor Drive and Wildwood Avenue. Uh, the, prop the previous use of the property was a junk or salvage yard uh, probably a decade or more ago. Um, recently, the applicant had come in and proposed to rezone the property from urban industrial to suburban office. And the reason being was obviously, so Rogers would have the ability to submit a conditional use for the uses that we're discussing today. Um, one of the proposed buildings that will be a general office type use for uh, Rogers treatment and outpatient services. Patients would come and go on a day daily basis while enrolled in counseling programs. They anticipate offering variant, various types of programs serving both adolescents and adults, and they estimate that their hours of operation would likely be 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. In phase one of the building will be approximately 8,900 square feet. This would be a single story <laughs> slab on grade structure, and the building is designed for future expansion. The second building would be a residential type facility built to CBRF uh, community-based residential facility standards. Um, it would be used for uh, Rogers structured housing residents who will reside there on a double occupancy basis. They anticipate that the residents would be enrolled in their day treatment and outpatient programs. And they're proposing uh, the following with regards to this particular building. It would be a single story structure with an exposed walkout lower level 
and residential style. Um, phase one is approximately 4,000 square feet. It would have six shared uh, bedrooms for six, uh, 12 residents, and each bedroom is an apartment-style double <coughs> occupancy room with private bath, sitting area, kitchenette, which includes microwave, refrigerator, sink, storage for cre uh, creating easy individual meals, and there's a number of other features to those. Um, as the Sheboygan area's first structured housing facility that serves patients in specialized treatment for a range of both mental health and addiction issues, the Center for Living on the Sheboygan campus will be a tremendous asset to the community. Rogers sees a day when residents in the Sheboygan region can receive internationally recognized specialized mental health treatment close to home, and they're prepared to seize the opportunity to build a campus and a presence that includes specialized treatment programs, a structured housing facility, and collaborations with schools and other groups that are destined to make life worth living for local young adults and adults struggling with mental health challenges. Um, the applicant does speak of some of the uh, future additions to the facility. Right now, we're just taking a look at the two uh, buildings that you see uh, on the uh, site plan as proposed. There are several challenges with the site. Um, there's some grading and some compaction and filling issues. So uh, the applicant has a little bit of work in terms of getting the site to where it needs to be but it's been an underutilized site for many years and the rezoning and um, allowing of the conditional use obviously is good for the people who need those services, but this has been an underutilized property for many years and it's an opportunity to uh, uh, really make a difference on this site and along Taylor Drive. So I can answer any questions and the applicants are here. Thank you very much for that report, Steve. Uh, the representatives for Rogers uh, Behavioral Health have any comments to add to that? Uh, no, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> okay, thank you. Commissioners, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve this project. This is Alderman Bourne. Alderman Bourne, I would make a uh, motion to approve subject to conditions. A monkey me or second. And Rogers has a good reputation, and Rogers is effective. I'm glad to second this. Well, thank you for those comments and that motion. So the motion is on the floor. Is there any other discussion? This is Alderman Bourne. Uh, I just have a couple questions. First of all, I, uh, I think this is uh, an exciting use for that property. Uh, this is going to be great for our community, but I do have a couple of questions with that site. Is there any environmental concerns or is there going to have to be any uh, environmental uh, tests done before they can build there because of the past history of that property? And is the is where the build? I, I tried to look at the photographs of where it was going to be built. Uh, are there any additional filling in that's going to have to be done, or uh, would that is it for this for these two phases? Is it going to be all right? Thank you. Gentlemen, did you have a response to that? We've gone through the process of investigating the site. Talk into the mic. We've gone through the process of investigating the site to our full extent with the, the DNR uh, in the registry uh, in, that they have on the site, and it is a clean site. It has been filled, uh, but it is all clean fill in not a brownfield site that we have to worry about any contaminants uh, within that area. I also had one, Alderman Bourne again, I did have one other question, and that is, uh, is Rogers Behavioral, is that all private pay, or do they accept private insurance? Do they accept uh, government, county referrals? Uh, how is the population of the facility uh, made up, and how are they reimbursed? Uh, at this point, uh, we'll probably be just uh, any uh, major institutional insurances we, uh, we usually uh, partner with and private pay. Um, at this point, we're, we're looking into government uh, uh, programs as well. Thank you for that response. Is there any other uh, discussion? Brian? Uh, yeah, Mr. Thompson, I'm just curious. Uh, it's a little hard to tell. Uh, what is the elevation of the building? Is it going to be kind of on the same level as Taylor Drive? It's a nice looking building. I, I'm just wondering if you can see it from there. I didn't understand the total. He wanted to know if the elevation of the building, if you're going to see it from Taylor Drive. 
elevation of the building will be approximately 15 feet below Taylor Drive. Uh, Taylor Drive is at an uphill slope uh, at that location. Uh, so you will see the building, you'll be looking down at the top of it, uh, majority of it, I should say. Okay, thank you. And then Ryan? Yeah, I know, I know you're aware of this, but there is that storm sewer going through there yet, and the city over time is gonna need access to that for repairs and everything, so that's going to be yeah, we just have rights to get in there and fix it and repair it when need be. So, just want to make you right, at this that. time we don't have any buildings going over it. Right, right. So we'd have access to it. Uh, we're trying to avoid the few manholes that are there. It's been a a uh, a difficult thing to to uh, straddle, <laughs> maneuver since it really bisects the site. Uh, but these uh, our engineers and, and architects have been done a great job to try to avoid it as much as possible. Right, but if it's ever got to be dug up, I think the, the repair of like the parking lot is going to be on the owner because it is it is over an easement. So just to, just, just, just to make you aware of that. Okay. Yeah. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, I ask Chad to call the roll for the passage. Mayor Vandersteen? Aye. Alderman Bourne? Aye. Dave Huffman? Jerry Jones? Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. Ryan Sazma? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks for your presentation. Next item is item 3.4, which is a conditional use and variance application by Green Street Development Group, LLC. <laughs> to amend the previously approved Oscar apartment complex at 1436 South 15th Street, the Vandervart property, and uh, to consider an amendment to the site plan and building site improvements. Steve. All right, uh, Joel and Evan Oliver are here today representing Greed Street Development. Um, Joel was in here previously, approximately <clears throat> about September of 19. Um, as, and I'm sure uh, Joel will speak to this a little bit, but as there was a little bit more geological investigations on the site, there was some areas that were found that could not be construct, uh, foundations couldn't be constructed on for uh, residential purposes. So basically before there were four larger, or four buildings on the site, and today the applicant has come back to amend that to allow for three larger 80 unit buildings on the site. Um, some of the other aspects that you'll notice is that all of the garages and carports have been removed and now they're going to be installing underground parking and surface parking. So that's a, a nice improvement. And then there are just, um, previously they were gonna use one of the Vandevart structures that was there after doing a, a um, for a, a pavilion type structure. Um, as After doing some uh, additional investigation, they found they weren't gonna be able to do that, but they still plan on constructing a new uh, pavilion structure in that northeast corner that the residents and the future bike path will go by. Um, again, this uh, uh, multifamily development consisting of 240 apartments in three standalone buildings. Um, the maximum height of the buildings is staying the same, and that would be the 49 feet 5 inches. Um, 395 parking spaces will be provided, with 180 of those being underground. 215 would be surface parking. Um, there are a number of uh, sites that would be included as part of this. Uh, a certified survey map would be created to create the um, Oscar development apartment site. There's the possibility of additional development at the southeast and southwest corners of the site. Um, that the applicant would be creating as part of uh, a certified survey map that would create those parcels in the future. Um, Let's see here, there was a traffic study that was completed as part of this project that included both the um, Oscar development as well as potential development maybe of a quick trip at uh, the uh, southeast corner closest to the intersection of Broadway and 14th. And there were some recommendations 
from that traffic impact study, and one of those recommendations was to install a new signal at Georgia Avenue in South Business Drive, <coughs> and that would be scheduled to be installed in 2021. Other than that, the project is uh, virtually the same in terms of the uh, con uh, variances and the conditions of approval that we had previously looked at. I can answer any questions and the applicants here. Thank you very much for that report, Steve. Would the applicant like to make any comments on the project? Uh, just thank you for having us here. Uh, we're sorry that we're having to make these modifications. Uh, like Steve said, uh, as we've been working with Wisconsin DNR, just through the historic fill on the site has been um, thrown us some curveballs. So hence the modifications we have today. Um, the unit count did go down by eight, just so you're aware. So we were at 248 before, we're at 240 now. The unit mix is essentially the same as it was before. Um, and the new pavilion um, that we're proposing to build in the pocket park is actually a larger structure than we would have been able to accommodate through saving the garage building. So at the end of the day, it probably serves a nicer um, kind of amenity for the community. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Commissioners, I'd entertain a motion to approve this project. Monty Mayor, move to approve. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion on the second. floor. Is there any further discussion on this motion? Uh, Alderman Boren, uh, I couldn't tell when I read this over, is, is the outdoor parking still going to be covered? Please respond. So um, the surface parking is now not covered. It is, um, we're providing more uh, spaces in the secured garages than we were previously uh, providing and we um, eliminated the carports. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, I'd ask uh, our, our secretary Chad to Call the roll, please. Mayor Vandersteen? Aye. Alderman Boren? Aye. Dave Huffman? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. Ryan Sazma? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you all. We'll be in touch soon. Stay safe. Take care yep. of yourselves. Item 3.5 is the conditional use and variance application by Ron Becker to construct a new mini storage buildings at the existing Transpo mini storage facility located at 1210 South 10th Street. I'll turn it over to Steve for a report on this project. All right. Thanks, Mayor. So we have Ron and John Becker, yep. owners of Transpo, and Steve Pesky from Distinctive Design. And so at the last meeting, there was a little bit of discussion with the plan commission and the applicant with regards to building design and setbacks and things of that nature uh, to try to increase a little bit of the green space, see if we could get some more setbacks along Kentucky uh, and North 10th Street and the alley, as well as getting a little bit uh, additional uh, design developments. And the applicant has been able to do some of those uh, improvements. They've increased the setback along Kentucky Avenue from seven feet to 10 feet. They've increased the setback to South 10th Street from four feet to 10 feet. And they increased the setback to the alley from three feet to 5.5 feet. Uh, in order to do that, they have uh, reduced the number of units from 93 to 87 and there's been some varying in terms of building size where they've given up some square footage uh, on both of the buildings and some of the sizing of the units and the interior drive aisle in effort to uh, meet those setbacks and building design and landscaping requirements that the plan commission had requested at the last meeting. So based on that, the architectural review board had an opportunity to uh, take a look at the new uh, plans last night from an architectural perspective, and they approved those plans. And at this point in time, it appears that the applicants had um, uh, 
completed what the plan commission had requested and staff was recommending approval of the proposal subject to the conditions you have before you. Thank you for that report, Steve. I guess I'd enter entertain a motion to approve this project. Montemayor. One at a time. I'll move to approve subject to conditions. Montemayor, second. Thank you very much for that motion and support. That uh, it's on the floor. Is there any other discussion on the motion? I just like to thank the applicant for uh, the work that they did to amend the, the program and just see if they have any other comments they'd like to add. Not at this time. I, uh, we appreciate your help in working us through uh, this project. Thank you very much. Uh, seeing no other questions, uh, I'd ask Chad to call the roll. Mayor Vandersteen? Aye. Alderman Boren? Aye. Dave Huffman? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. Ryan Sazma? Aye. All eyes. Motion passes. Good luck with your project, gentlemen. So with that, I'd uh, ask uh, Jerry Jones to uh, make his usual motion. Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All have been born in second. <laughs> Okay, all those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, right now, our next meeting is planned for April 14th. We'll keep you posted on that is when the agenda comes out. I just, Alderman Warren just wanted to thank staff for all the effort that went into this. Thank you're, th thank, you're, you. thank you, staff. Thank you. Thanks for those comments. Everybody have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Well. All right. Efficient government. That went All pretty right. good. Huh? Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> now, probably thing, went about as good as it could you go. Know, you know how we get hey, rid of this? Yeah, right, right, exactly. We take the old Chromebooks yeah. from the council members and we give them, either have, they call in on their tablets and set them up with everything, but I don't want to give that job to Meredith to do in the middle of the uh, election. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You guys, after yeah, April you think 7th, that's going to come into play at all? And, well, and, and so here, here's the thing. Um, if, if we start getting close, just contact me. And then what we can do is we could request the plan commission to do an extension. So so there's an ability, like a one that they can go for like six months, but it has to be something that's submitted, and then and then that way we take care of that. Yeah, yeah. You don't you don't know. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you know, this is you know difficult for us too because we've never done this. It went about as good as it could, but, um, you know, yeah, so.